the lies, the lies, the pathological lies, the chameleon behavior. Now, were there some personality traits? We gonna get into it right now, straight with no chaser from a therapist. Now, it's hot, y'all. Y'all gonna see all the guns all summer. The tat's gonna be tatted, okay? But if you are new here, I am Denise Bray. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. I love true crime, documentaries, pop culture. And you wanna stay tuned, you wanna join the family, hit that bell, that notification bell, cause we gonna have to get into some things. Now, I remember this, what was it, 2011? I remember the story, I remember seeing those images, but let's take it on back before we get too far ahead, cause I'm gonna be a little bit unhinged in this recap review, okay? Now, okay, imagine you marry a woman, blue eyes, blonde hair, the perfect wife, you have the perfect life, until one day she decides to disappear, okay? Now, some people might find this is the real life gone girl. People might sigh with her and feel bad that she maybe got married too soon, but she was a liar, okay? She was a liar, all right? And so many people got hurt because this woman, this mom decided, oh, my whole life, I'm gonna blow it up. Not only my own life, I'm gonna blow up my kid's life, my husband life for selfish reasons. And we see a lot of women, cause you know, women are toxic, just like men. But for some reason we focus so much on men being toxic and not so much women. Now, from the beginning of this story, you know, these two people got married and from the beginning it was a lie, okay? She met her husband off a lie. There were red flags, okay? Okay? She said, well, she had a heart condition. It was all a lie, okay? And from there, it makes me continue to see that people want love and connection so much so they will ignore the red flags. This man, her ex-husband, saw the red flags. And I'm lo I love that we got to see finally from his perspective because... If you're familiar with the case, in 2010, this woman disappeared. She disappeared for 22 days, I believe. The whole world was looking for him as blonde hair and blue eyes, okay? Only for her to show up on Thanksgiving Day on the side of the road, in chains, shackled, bruised, um, sores, rashes, saying that she was released from her kidnappers and she was just so happy to be alive. And that was the end of it. Pretty much, if you remember the story, we didn't hear anything else until years later when um, she finally was being prosecuted and they came out and said it, the FBI said it was all a lie. But when it initially happened, I remember thinking, why would two, in her words, Mexican women randomly kidnap a white woman living in Shasta Woods, okay? And side note, Okay, there's a lot of shady stuff that happens up there in Shasta. I saw a different documentary about these people who were going up there to be on this weed farm, I think it was, and they all kept disappearing. Let me know if you know what I'm talking about. Okay, but getting back to this story, I was like, why would two random Latino women really want to kidnap a random woman? Okay, what do they have to benefit? What do they have to gain? It just really didn't make sense to me. Okay, now I love true crime. I watch a lot of Lifetime, Dateline, and normally you see men kidnapping young girls, boys sometimes, but this one didn't, it just didn't sit right with me. Okay, and then when I saw the sketches, I was like, come on now, it still don't make sense. And so looking at it from a therapist's perspective, because a lot of us know the story, so I'm not going to go over that so much, but thinking about being married to someone who's a pathological liar. And Sherry was somebody who was a chameleon, okay, in this relationship. And I think in other relationships too. Being married and in a relationship with someone who's a pathological liar, who lies for no reason but to lie. And I think because of her trauma, the things that she has gone through, the physical abuse, her best friend even saying she saw her mother physically abusing her, grabbing her by the hair. She lacked the proper nurturing and attention from caregivers. She learned early on that I, the only way I can get attention is through acting out, okay? And I don't like the life I'm living as a child. I want that fairy tale, my Prince Charming 
to come along and save me, be my protector. Comes along her husband. Okay, now initially she before she met the husband, she was in a relationship with someone who supposedly was abusive. And people said that because she said it, but we never got any indication that this man was actually abusive. To me, it could have been another lie that she made up to make people feel sorry for her. People who lie, who are pathological liars, need attention. They need to be people to see them as a victim. Okay, and I believe that she needs to be seen as a victim. And I think the way that she decided to run away, I think she got tired of her life. I think there's also a part that was just like, I need attention, okay? I need people to feel sorry for me. Saying that her husband was abusive, saying that he was going to chop up her body and put in the backyard, I didn't get none of that from this man. If anything, what I got was from him being naive, okay? He was very naive. And sometimes people who have personality disorders, narcissists, pathological liars, they are like vampires. They suck on to you, okay? And it's hard to release them because they're getting something from you. And if you notice throughout this whole documentary, she wanted her husband always there, the Prince Charming, to save her, to make her feel comfortable, okay? And it was a disservice to everybody. The whole world was looking for the woman. And now, quiet as is kept, if this was a black woman, day one, case closed, she ran away, okay? Nobody would have cared. We see so many black girls kidnapped, disappearing on the news, so many stories, moms crying, and the police come, what, weeks later. And it's important that first 24 to 48 hours, that law enforcement needs to be on the scene to pick up evidence and all the pieces before witnesses forget things, the trauma sets in, your memory is not the same, to pick up clues. But if you're black, nobody cares, okay? Okay, that's the truth. Argue with me in the comments, but it's the truth. Now, okay, it just slowly, slowly pull back just different things. I thought... As a therapist, I wonder how that therapist felt knowing that eventually it came out that she was lying, okay? The confusion for the husband when, when he first saw her in the hospital, he thought it was a lie. But it's the shame, the guilt of, huh, I can't really, you know, go with the fact that my wife lied because that would make me a horrible person to think that she's lying. But in my mind, if his first initial gut was that she was lying, I was wondering if she's done this before, okay? It has not come up. I don't think it came up in this particular Hulu docuseries that she had done it before. But I was like, if your initial good as a husband, you've been with this woman at this point for, I think they had been together at least like almost, what, seven, eight years at this point. If your initial gut is to not believe her, what is fueling that, okay? And so over time, the lie comes out. And I feel bad for him because he really did believe it. He put all the second guessing to the side, okay? And even when the story started to unravel, I do feel like the police, the FBI did him and them kids a disservice, okay? Because they realized she was lying, but they didn't do anything about it for what, a year and a half? Okay, it was a year and a half before they actually did something. And... Just how he had to, he didn't have to, but I think there's a lot of guilt of this is my wife. This is the mother to my children. I feel like she is lying. The evidence shows she has lying, but the police have not done anything. So I don't know. It's like that internalized gaslighting. Like everything is there, but, but they're not doing anything. So maybe it's just in my mind, but he finally saw once she got arrested, she got out, okay? She wanted to meet up with him. And the first thing, she trying to drop them draws. Because in the past, I'm wondering if physical intimacy was a key to distract people from her terrible ways, okay? She really is a chameleon. She morphs into each chapter of her life. What is needed in that chapter? 
And those are the people you have to watch out for. And I feel bad for her kids because who were you the whole time? And to now know that the kids don't want anything to do with her. Also, the abandonment, the loss, the grief of the relationship, just the internalized stuff that those kids are going to deal with because her the mother chose to be selfish. The mother chose to, I'm going to choose myself. And the fact that she, she watched for 22 days on her little burner, okay? She watched and sat there as... They were looking for her. She watched her husband cry, her sister, okay? And I hate that when she got back, she got to live a regular old life for what, four years? Because it took them a while for them to actually sentence her, okay? And the thing that they went through, she put those kids and her husband through. When he said that they were sniffing alcohol, oh, baby girl, this woman had more issues than what I initially thought, Okay, making your kids sick for attention from doctors. Is that much on the by proxy? Okay, all of it was for the attention. And it started to give narcissists. There's just so many things going on there that long-term therapy, which she'll probably never get because apparently she's, already, she's in another relationship, her next victim. Okay, but this one was living a double life off the backs of her husband, her kids, her family. And at the end, it did not say what her relationship like was with her sister. I was curious about that because the sister seemed like she was conflicted also, but I couldn't tell if they weren't, they were no contact. The husband, she dead to me. What she did to my kids, she dead to me. Okay. And you know, it's unfortunate that because of the level of hurt that she has put him through, he has not been in another relationship. He does not know if he'll ever be able to love, care for someone the same way that he was in the relationship with her with. It just left so many people's lives like riddled with pain and trauma. Okay. And when they showed him go to the apartment, condo, duplex of where she was staying, that to me reminded me of some exposure therapy. And he said he's not sure if this is closure but to go into the place where your wife was hiding for 22 days, that says a lot. And not only that, it was what, an eight hour drive? He might've flown, but that takes a lot to go into the place that caused you so much harm. That um, the, the complex, your wife, trying to heal your kids from what happened. Not only did they you know, go through grief when they were young with the, the mom disappearing, the grief of when she came back, um, the grief of when she went to jail, the grief of when she was released and now you don't want to have anything to do with her. And now the husband has to answer all these questions. I really do hope that they are in some long-term therapy because I don't want them to grow up and have the abandonment that is affecting them through their mother to now show up in their relationships with friends, partners. That's really hard to lose a parent, but know that they're still alive it's different if the parent is no longer with us but to know that the parent from what i read she don't live that far and she has to provide visits now with the children but that's gotta be rough the same generational trauma the same trauma that's happening with her she has now poured into her own kids because she did not deal with her own pain she thought a man would solve them a man would be a band-aid for the different pain that she went through so so many different layers but what do you guys think did you watch it Okay, and now this documentary has been done so many times, but I have never seen it from the perspective of her husband. That was the most interesting part to watch him go through and, and hold his composure so many times where you could tell it was hurting him to rewatch the videotapes, to relive, to look at the photos of them when they first got together, the videos. Their whole relationship was very much chronicalized through different things. So I want to know your thoughts, okay? We got to get this documentary. Are you familiar with her story? Because you know we going to get into it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.